you guys it's time it's five o'clock okay so i have to tell you this has been kind of a crazy day so um trying to get started and go live so my hi my name is jennifer and i am pamper chef consultant i've been a pamper chef consultant for quite a while like 25 years today i've actually had that on two separate discussions um in the past uh in the past 24 hours so anyway i'm so excited because today i've kind of changed rebranded tuesdays i guess just at least for the next couple weeks to taste buds tuesday i thought we'd be able to have my help husband come in and help he's just got other stuff going on so maybe when we get back from our trip so uh but right now we're going to be talking about um taste buds and we're going to be making a taste buds recipe and so that's kind of exciting i'm going to tilt this up a little bit it's cutting off the top of my head so, all right, so you guys know the drill. Come in, say hello, tell me where you're watching from. Look, I live in Colorado. I actually have short sleeves on today. I had a long sleeve shirt on. It was comfy, but um, I was trying to clean this thing and managed to get oil all over me. So um, my husband is usually, my, this is my husband's, one of his favorite tools. And when he fills it with oil, he puts it so tight, I literally cannot get it off. So um, I had to do some, take it all apart, but I got it to work. So I'm very excited about that. Anyway, so I had to change my shirt because I had oil all down the front. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, my name's Jen Soto. And um, I love coming here, teaching you guys some ideas and some tips and some tricks. And um, I'm in a really good mood because we finished our taxes a day early. It's April 18th. Taxes are due today, if you didn't know that. And we finished ours yesterday. And surprise, we're getting a, a refund, which we were totally not expecting. So praise be to God because that's where all my blessings come from. So anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about taste buds. So this month's taste buds are on special. And, um, and so I've been really making sure I use my taste buds. So... I've been subscribing to them since they came out two years ago, and um, and you know my husband has a lot of allergies, so sometimes he uh, can't eat the recipes, and so I feel kind of frustrated by that. And then I started using a um, meal kit. Home, I was using Blue Apron at first, and then I started using Home Chef. And what I realized in the process of doing that is that I can definitely alter these recipes. Now, you guys know I'm not a chef. I just cook at home. Um, I love to cook. I, I love to share ideas and things I've learned in my business. But um, changing and altering recipes fundamentally was really um, a challenge for me. So I've been doing that a lot for the last couple of years. You've probably seen a lot of videos on here that share that. And so I decided to give Taste Buds um, another try as far as um, really incorporating them into our diet. So a couple of other things happened. Um, one, I, I realized I need to eat more veggies and more fish and less um carbs and so i don't eat a lot of carbs anymore sugar still trying to kick that habit but um but anyway so uh so i've been doing that with my home chef meals and so it kind of changes the way we do the recipes so i love taste buds though because i love and somebody asked me why i did the meal kits and i i just you know for years i planned meals for six people and um, we have four children and I tried really hard to make sure I hit everybody. Well, now it's just my husband and I and sometimes my son eats with us. And so there's a lot less like throwing spaghetti against the wall to see who you're going to hit. Also, I don't have to cook, you know, for a crowd so I can cook some um, different kinds of food. So all that to say, I'm super excited. So this month's taste bud recipes are phenomenal. Last week, I can't even remember what we made. What did we make last week? A ramen noodle stir fry. It was so good. I ate on it all week. So if I was going to do that for my husband, I might use rice noodles instead of the ramen noodles and definitely leave out the um, red peppers and just put something else in there instead, like carrots or um, asparagus or something like that. So you can see that demo. It's on both my YouTube page and on my Facebook page. So, um, so that's one recipe. This one is jerk salmon. We're going to do that one this week and then either next week or later on this week, I'm going to do the honey, the hot wings with the, with the special seasoning, the crunchy garlic crisp seasoning. So um, the recipes come in a little box like this, and there's three sample seasonings in here. They're basically like half a bottle. And then you get three recipes, and on each one of the recipes, there's like ideas that you can use. So let me show you this one that we're doing today. So this is what we're doing today. It's called a jerk salmon. Is that right jerk salmon and you can use you can use um 
chicken if you want to, if you're not like a salmon fan. I'm not a salmon fan, but I went and bought salmon today to do this because I need to eat more fish. So um, anyway, so right here in this spot right here, it gives you some more ideas that you can do. So we're also going to make some carrots. So this recipe calls for rice. I'm going to make the rice because I want to show it to you. It's really a cool recipe. Um, I'm probably not going to eat the rice. I'm probably going to eat the carrots. But as I put on my notes here, we're going to start with the carrots. So I went ahead and peeled the carrots already. I mean, you know, you don't need to see me peel carrots. This is our veggie peeler. It peels this way and it peels this way. So like when I do potatoes, I tend to pull them towards me. This rotates a little bit. So, um, and you can even lock it in. I, I'm trying to, can't remember how to lock it in, but there you go. You can lock it in so that it doesn't swivel, but it swivels, which is great because it goes around something. And then the best part, of course, dishwasher safe. Okay. So now we've got our carrots here. This has to do one pound of carrots. I'm not doing one pound of carrots. I don't have enough people in my house to do one whole pound of carrots, but I'm going to do, um, I'm gonna do these like eight carrots I have right here. I'm gonna use my crinkle cutter and I'm just gonna cut the carrots on a bias, cut them about half an inch thick, okay? So this is actually, um, they have me do this a lot in my meal kits and so this is actually a really good way to prep your carrots. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to cook them in the oven. That's how we're gonna do them first, okay? And then we'll do our last one. So we used to live in Alaska, and, and Alaskans use this tool called an ulu. And this is kind of like an ulu. It's a curved blade, but it's a crinkle cut blade. Crinkle cut is great because it helps to like keep the seasonings on or whatever. So I've got my carrots here. I'm gonna put them in there, ta-da, with the flexible cutting mat. We're gonna put a little oil in here. So I've already pre-measured the oil because I was playing with it to make sure it worked. Um, you just squeeze these buttons right here and the oil comes up. So it says a tablespoon, so we're doing like half a tablespoon and we're gonna toss it. So another thing happened today. So I told you I spilled oil all over myself. Also, um, I ordered Walmart, but it's, my delivery's not here yet. So, um, <laughs> so I'm waiting for my Walmart delivery. So some of the ingredients for today are not here. <laughs> we'll just make, okay? Like fresh cilantro and mangoes, not here. So, all right, so I've got this and I've got them tossed in oil, okay? And I'm gonna divide them. I'm gonna use the modular sheet pan here. This is actually one of my favorite. I love our sheet pans, but look, I use these all the time and look at how clean they look. I'm gonna use the two sheet pans right here because if you guys have followed me for a minute, then you know that my husband has allergies. And so we're gonna take his carrots and we're gonna put them in one thing and we're gonna put some salt and pepper on it. Oop, I almost knocked it over. We're just gonna put some salt and then some pepper. We'll give that a little toss. And then mine is gonna have the, um, the jerk seasoning. In it. I'm gonna open up my packet of jerk seasoning. Let's see, how much does it say to put in here? Oh my gosh, it smells so good. One tablespoon, so we're probably gonna use about uh, a teaspoon. Teaspoon sounds good, right? That's like one third. It's gonna make my nose sneeze in just a second. <coughs> Excuse me, because I took a big whiff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take about a teaspoon because like I said, I only did half and then I divided this in half again. But I love the jerk seasoning. It has a little little kick to it, not too much. Um, I used to make this recipe called jerk chicken nachos. You can actually um, click on the link that's in the comment or in the description and then just go to the <coughs> search engine. Guys, that's really strong. <clears throat> go to the search engine and search jerk chicken nachos. <coughs> so good. They're so tasty, and um, and I would do that, and I would also use the chipotle seasoning to make those nachos and call them chipotle chicken nachos. So I have seasoned, not seasoned. <laughs> We're gonna stick these in the oven over here. My oven's preheated to 425. I think I'm gonna sneeze again. <coughs> Excuse me, that really got me. <laughs> 
Okay. If we were, um, if I was recording this for a video to make, I would stop and not have myself sneezing and having so much trouble. So, anyway, <laughs> Woo, really got me. I don't have any tissues over here. Um, and I can feel my nose is still a little bit irritated. Now, okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is the rice. And so for the rice, we needed one cup of long grain white rice. I used jasmine rice and we rinsed it. So um, the reason that you wanna rinse the um, rice is because it gets off the starch and um, it gives your rice like fluffier texture. It kind of frees the rice, I guess you could say. I really, since I started rinsing rice, I really like it. Um, so this strainer, the rice would come right through. So I just put one of my little reusable cloths on here and, um, and then I drained it. So we are going to, it says, um, put the rice in here and one cup rice, coconut water and so, coconut milk, so water and salt. Okay. So we've got this. Dump that rice. This is the stain, the smallest of the stainless mixing or the stainless um, strainers. We need to do one cup of coconut milk. So I've got my coconut milk right here, unsweetened. Oh, I'm sorry, my nose is like dripping now. What is over that? Okay, so one cup, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna take the um, can opener, put it on the top here, and just twist it around. So I thought about doing this in the um, pressure cooker, the deluxe multi-cooker. You could definitely do that, but I wasn't really sure about the mixture of the coconut milk and the rice are in the water. So I decided to not do that. I'm actually gonna go ahead and give this a little mix right here. I shook it, but I'm afraid I didn't do enough. It's separated, so I wanna make sure I get this enough. Using the little mini whipper, so handy for lots of different things, but perfect that in there. So we need one cup of um, unsweetened coconut milk right here. Okay. And then we need one cup of water. So we'll just add one cup of water here. This is the one cup out of the easy read measure cups. And then I'm actually going to give this, oh, we need some rice, some, uh, we need a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my salt, half a teaspoon, okay, and then we'll give this a little stir, just to get it good and mixed together. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys an, uh, a little secret, let <laughs> you in on a little secret. I am terrible at making stovetop rice. I never make rice on the stovetop. If you can make rice on the stovetop, I bow to you because <laughs> I cannot. But we're gonna try it today on a live video right here with all of you guys. I'm gonna try it. So um, what it says to do is um, bring it to a boil, cover and reduce the heat to low, cook for 15 minutes or until the liquid is absorbed, turn off the heat and keep the lid on for another five minutes. Then fluff with a fork. So we're gonna watch this and when it boils, then it'll be time to um, turn the heat down. Turn the heat to low, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and start making our salsa. So one of the things I didn't get in my Walmart order was I didn't get a mango, but luckily I had some frozen mango and I had some pineapple. So I'm going to kind of do this together and we're going to use the manual food processor. So over in my VAP group and my, my foodie friends group, um, there was a discussion. So if you're not part of my foodie friends group, you should definitely join. But there was a discussion over there about whether you liked the manual food processor or the um, food chopper. And so um, we, we're going to use the manual, we're going to use the manual food processor today to make this salsa. Okay. And so you need a mango, which is about a cup. This is a little more than a cup. So I'm actually going to double this recipe. Um, because I'm going to use the mango and the pineapple. I just think that sounds so yummy. And then we'll have to add the cilantro when it comes, when it eventually gets here. So, okay. So I didn't add all of the, all of the pineapple and I need to get my, um, I mean, I didn't add all the mango and then I'm just going to add some pineapple in here. I don't really want the juice. This is just fresh pineapple. It was on sale at the store for like a dollar. 
and it was perfect, ready to go. The manual food stamp processor is great because it actually holds one cup of, or three cups of ingredients. So you can put a lot of stuff in there. Now this recipe doesn't call for it. It says you can add a jalapeno, um, but I'm actually gonna use some, I'm gonna add some green onions to it. So, um, and I'm just gonna cut these into smaller pieces to stick them in here. And we'll stick those in there. I'm throwing stuff on the floor, it's fantastic. All right, so, and then we need half a lime juiced. And I'm gonna tell you guys, okay, so lime, what am I missing from the store? I'm missing lime, mango, and cilantro. So, this is my lime, you guys. <laughs> it's a little hard, but we're gonna take this. You wanna make sure you use a sharp knife because it is, uh, you don't wanna cut yourself. And we're gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna poke, there we go, poke it first. And we're gonna see if we can get some juice out of here. This is definitely an older lime and it's, it's really dry. My kids are always like, mom, the limes are dead, throw them away. I'm like, no, no, no. But I wanna show you how much juice we can get out of this hard lime. Look at all that juice. So much, it crushed, totally crushed the lime because the outside skin is completely dry. So I could not zest this lime if I wanted to but I can squeeze all that juice out. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And then use this, this is my sister's press. This goes in the dishwasher as well. Now, we're gonna put the lid on here and, oh, I forgot one other thing. We need half a teaspoon, which we doubled this, right? So we need a teaspoon of the rub. We need to put that in there. Got me again when I <laughs> opened that up. So we're just gonna chop this. If you want it nice and you know beautifully chopped, that's fine. I wanted it to be easy. You guys ever done that? You want it to be easy? Anyway, one of the people on, in my group said they weren't really sure like what they could use their manual food processor for. So I thought, oh, I will definitely use manual food processor for this today so that you can see this. Okay, so this is hand wash only, so I'm not sticking it in the sink. This blade can go in the dishwasher or um, be washed in the sink. And now let's get a little spoon. My, here comes my dog to the rescue. Um, I think this would be great if I had some red pepper to add in here. Mmm. So yummy. Look at that. It's sweet. It's cold too, because the mango is still partially frozen. Perfect. I definitely think that I might defrost. I have some roasted red pepper. I might defrost like one little sliver, chop it up and add it in here. Such a great little topping, okay? So like the recipe, like I said, the recipe says you can add, um, says you can add uh, something to it. What did I say? Jalapeno. <laughs> All right. So we've got our mango, put that over there. And let's see what's next. Okay, the next thing is um, we're gonna use our cast iron uh, to do this. We're going to, um, let's see what it says to do. Brush, okay, I probably should have done this first, but I didn't, I wanted to get the other stuff cooking. So we're gonna open our salmon. Um, I just got Atlantic um, salmon, and got it at King Supers. Um, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I am not a big salmon eater. I like, never eat salmon. I don't really like it. Um, so we're going to cut this into, oh, it smells delicious though. It doesn't smell bad at all. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut this into uh, four fillets. Okay. So I already see a little bone. So we're going to cut this like this and then we're gonna cut this down, okay? So um, so then we have four fillets, or four little pieces, should I say. It's one fillet, four pieces. My husband likes salmon. I don't really know if Ethan likes salmon. So, oh, this is boiling, I heard it. We're gonna put the lid on it and turn it down to low. Told you guys I'm terrible at that, I forget about it. Probably should have put it in the quick cooker. 
All right, so we've got this, and the next thing we're gonna do is brush it with oil. So we have our oil here. You could use the kitchen spritzer. That's another good thing to use, but we're just gonna brush it. Put some oil in the prep bowl. I love the prep bowls. If you guys have watched me do a video ever, guaranteed you've seen the prep bowls. Here is the Walmart. There it is. And the dogs are barking. No, Whitney. Whitney, no. I'm so sorry. I knew I should have put them away. I knew that would happen. Whitney. All right, so we've got our set, we've got that on there, and then we're going to sprinkle both sides with the rub. Okay? So we did one side, we'll do the other side. This is real life, you guys. So I'm just gonna tap this to get it to come out nice and even. I think I saw that on a cooking show somewhere. If I tried to shake it out, it would not come out right. Oh, that last one I'm not gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it plain for my hubby, okay? And I'm gonna take this off. Actually, I'm gonna rinse it. Yikes, I almost forgot. <laughs> so, okay, so now we need to turn them over and I'm actually gonna turn them over. Yeah, I'll turn them over right here. And we're gonna do salt and pepper on his. I get to go in and I forget. I'm gonna have to cook his in a separate pan. I'll cook it separately when we're done. Um, so we'll put some more oil in here so I can baste the other side. So now we used to be stationed in Alaska and we ate a lot of salmon up there. I still wasn't a fan. <laughs> I would always have a freezer full and I had to figure out how to cook it in a way that, um, that I liked it. So the way that I always cooked it was I used our uh, teriyaki honey glaze on it. I would cook it in the grill pan, salt and pepper, and I would add the teriyaki honey glaze to it and that was yummy. So, um, a lot of times I made salmon on nights when I wasn't eating at home. <laughs> so, all right, so here we are. I know that I'm weird that way. All right, so now we're gonna heat up our cast iron pan. So, I'm actually gonna move this, that is off kilter. Move this over here. And we'll turn this up higher, just like that. Okay? And we're gonna let that heat up for a couple of minutes. So um, while my nose and my body and all that recovers and um, <laughs> from the Jamaican jerk. So, all right, guys. So if you have any questions uh, about the jerk seasoning or about how um, taste buds work, I'm happy to answer those. Just go ahead and comment below. Um, so this, I mean, even after I do this recipe and I did two things, Look, I have all of that seasoning left. So I love that I can use it for different things. And so that's why I wanna share those ideas with you guys. Once a quarter, so every three months, we have a specialty exclusive seasoning that we pop in. And that is, um, that's just exclusively for our taste bud subscribers. It's not even anything in our line. Um, and sometimes it makes it to our line. That's how our black truffle herb seasoning came to be, was it was a, an exclusive seasoning for taste buds, and then it became a regular part of our line. All right. So now what this says to do, let me read it. So, um, and gently press into the fish. I didn't really do that. I should do that. Um, so it sticks. I think that the reason that wanted me to do it early is so it was kind of reconstituted Okay, and then, um, so we are gonna heat the oil in the skillet, uh, and um, actually what I'm gonna do, yeah, I'll do this one. Um, it's the grill pan, but that's fine. And, and for three minutes, add the salmon skin side up and cook for about five minutes until it's a deep brown, flip and cook for an additional two to three. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do we're gonna get another thing of oil, because I already put the other one away. 
so that I can baste my pan. Okay, don't need that much. This, and then lift the press up, and then we're gonna baste the pan. So cast iron needs to have oil on it so the stuff doesn't stick. So that's why we're putting oil on here. And we're gonna put oil on the top part too. We don't want anything to stick. So this grill pan is one of our new um, pans. Just came out this spring. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and cook skin side up. These three things right here. And then I'm gonna cook the other salmon at the same time. I'm just gonna put it right here. Okay. These are for Eric. <laughs> and then these mats are dishwasher safe, so that's pretty handy. All right, so skin side up for three minutes. I'm gonna put the press on there to kind of hold it on there, and then we'll turn it over. So, um, all right, so this paint, this comes with a lid, so I could store that in the fridge. And gosh, I think that's about it. So we'll just, um, this is the large thing for the salmon. I don't need that, but we've got lots of stuff here. So, um, also, this month, um, so the taste buds are on special, also cookware is on special. So um, if you want to host a party in the month of um, April, I highly recommend it. I have, like, next week is the last week, and I have, like, two spots that I can fit people in to do parties. Um, maybe I could do three. But uh, you could get 60% off any cookware that's on this part of the set. So the nonstick, um, the stainless nonstick, and the Brilliance cookware are all part of that. And then also April hosts are getting an extra $100 free. So that's kind of a nice bonus, um, getting an extra $100 free. So instead of earning $115, we have a $600 show, or $650 show, you would earn $215. So if you have a big item on your list, like an air fryer or something like that, um, getting all of that free is a great way to get that item that's on your list. So highly recommend it. Um, and so if you know somebody who has a big item on their wish list, I mean, and the mixer, which I haven't even showed you guys today, if you want the mixer, the only way to get it is to host a party. And so if you're going to host a party, you might as well host it in April when you can get an extra hundred dollars free. So, um, anyway, so can you guys hear that sizzle? The rice seems to be coming along okay. I'm still questionable. But it seems to be coming along okay. So I'm just going to throw this stuff in my dishwasher really quick. Um, while we're waiting, while we're talking here. So, um, so anyway, some of the other things. May. Here's what's happening in May. If you're thinking, oh, I can't host a party now, but maybe in May. In May, our stoneware is on special. So, for 60% off. So, when you host a party in May, you might choose to get the stoneware as your 60% off item. So, that's a good choice, too. Um, and if you don't know, our stoneware... If you're like an old time fan, stop Watson. Watson's licking the thing, that's gonna make him sick. Um, but if you're like an old time Pampered Chef fan, you've been a long time fan, I shouldn't say old, I should say long time. If you've been a long time Pampered Chef fan, then you might like to know stop, that um, the stoneware has been changed and now the stone can be preheated and it can go in the, um, under the broiler so it can, withstand like super high heat and um so that's pretty handy do you guys notice that i just put everything in the dishwasher <laughs> like everything I just put everything in the dishwasher even this can go in the dishwasher but doesn't really need to the only thing it couldn't was this so i'll show you how i wash it just get my little scrubby here scrub it don't don't submerge it in water and then I put it on the rack to dry, okay? Or dry it with your towel. You can do that too. So, all right. I think it's probably time to flip these guys over. So we'll lift this up. The press does get hot. So we're going to lift that up. And we're going to flip these guys over. Oh my goodness, they look really cool. Smells good. Okay, and we'll switch. Oh. We lost 
left a little bit of fish in that one, so. Okay, so that's going to sit there and cook for another couple of minutes. Check the carrots. Oh yeah, they're probably done. So we'll get our carrots out here. This is just a really great quick recipe. Let me show you what these carrots look like. Done to perfection. Wonderful. Let's put these, oh, and they smell so good. So the jerk seasoning has like a cinnamon in it. And so it just has that really sweet flavor. Um, and it has, I don't know what else it has in it, but it has like just this really Caribbean flavor. Mmm. So good. This still has some time to go. The fish is looking good. We turned it over and now it was like pink halfway through, but now that pink is all gone and it's cooked solid. So that's good. Um, super flaky. That's gonna be amazing when I put it on a plate. And then the rice as well. So, all right, so I've got my plate here. I'm all ready, I'm all ready. This is so good, I could just eat it plain. Mm. Still a little bit frozen, so mix that up a little bit. Dishwasher safe, that's handy. I'm impatient. This is, this is probably why I can't cook rice. Things take a little bit longer to cook up here in Colorado, so um, that rice is gonna take a little bit longer to cook than it might come out. And I'm not using a timer. Should use a timer. <laughs> I'm not using a timer. Okay. I love these trivets. These stack together. So, and they're nice and thick. All right, guys. So, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'll post a picture when this is done and show you guys what our dinner looks like. All right? Hope you had a great time watching this recipe come together. Um, and my Walmart order to be delivered in the middle of the recipe and all the things that could go wrong could go wrong. So have a great night and post your comments and your questions below.